y'all, Miss Naylor here. We are on page 106 of your roots book. Our root is fawn, which means sound. Let's take a look at the top. We do have at least one word up here you'll need to know that is not in the chapter. Any word containing fawn always has something to do with sound. A symphony from the root sim meaning together and fawn meaning sound is literally sounds together, presumably pleasant sounds. If a sound is harsh or unpleasant, it is called cacophony from the roots caco meaning bad and fawn meaning sound, whereas smooth and harmonious sounds, especially words or phrases that please the ear, are called euphony, from the roots you meaning good and fawn meaning sound. Pretty simple stuff, right? A lot of these words are very clearly from their roots. There may be one or two exceptions here, but for the most part, it should be pretty simple. So, our first word is cacophony. Again, roots keiko, meaning bad, fawn meaning sound. It is a noun. It means disagreeable or discordant sounds. Let's take a look. It's hard to hear myself think with the cacophony created by this protest behind me. It's all. There was a cacophony of sounds in Washington Square Park. I woke up this morning to a massive cacophony created by a tone-deaf pianist in the park. I don't know about you, I would not want to wake up to the sounds of a tone-deaf pianist in the park. That does not sound pleasant. It sounds like cacophony, right? Um, our sentence here, only a mother can enjoy the cacophony of her child's violin practice. So what I would suggest, um, just looking at the sentence made me think of it, you really should use the sentences both in the chapter and the ones in the exercises to help you study. Remember, it's great to know what these words mean, that's important, but also being able to use them in a sentence, right? And to do that, you have to practice figuring out where they fit. So have that in mind, it would really help you to practice putting words where they fit, okay? All right, our next word is euphonious, from the roots you meaning good and fawn meaning sound. It is an adjective and it means having a pleasant sound, right? Which makes sense because it, the roots literally mean good sound, right? Uh, it means harmonious as well. Our sentence, I listen to the euphonious sounds of the forest. Um, that's a great sentence, right? Sure, the forest is harmonious, sure. But this is really a better example. I love this sound. Written in these walls are the stories that I can't explain. You guys may not be giant acapella nerds like I am, because I am. Um, but, so this is an acapella group, and they have a really great euphonious sound. They create harmonies with their voices. And so, um, just. That's kind of what euphonious means. It has that really beautiful harmony or kind of the sound of when you're walking down like a path in, in a nature area, like a, in a forest or a park where there aren't a whole lot of people and you just hear like the wind and the trees and the birds and things like that. So this entire sound, this harmony is created by their voices, of course, and that's what makes it euphonious. I like it. I leave my heart open, but it stays right here empty for days. Is that not the coolest thing? Anyway. Next we have phonetics. Phonetics from the roots, oh, just fawn, meaning sound. It's a noun, the branch of language studying dealing with speech sounds and their symbols. We're gonna zoom in a little here. Uh, so take a look, we have like the, the shape of a B, the letter B, right? Well, this symbol in phonetics references the sound that B makes in the word bed. So if you're looking at a pronunciation guide, like when you open a dictionary and you look at the way it says to pronounce a word and you're like, Miss Naylor, these are not letters. This is why, right? Because sometimes they're symbols. So for instance, we have this kind of U and sort of I looking letter that represent the OO sound in the word two. Okay? That's what phonetics are. Yay, phonetics. Then we have phonics. Also a noun, the use of sounds of letters and groups of letters in teaching beginners to read. So we have little kids learning to say the word table, and this one's like table, and it's like table, right? So they're sounding it out because they know the sounds that individual letters and groups of letters make. So sometimes we teach them groups of words to help them remember. The double E sound, E, we find in the word B and tree, right? So phonics 
the teacher used phonics to teach the children to sound out words, like this guy over here. Polyphonic, from the roots poly meaning many, and phon meaning sound, is an adjective having or making many sounds, representing more than one sound, such as seen, cat, and cereal. So, um, I just realized that I have the old definition on my slide, and I apologize. Use the one here, it's much better. Um, I'm gonna show you a really cool video from a guy called Beardy Man. It's a TED Talk, which is sort of cool. Um, I'd like you all to ask yourselves a question which you may never have asked yourselves before. What is possible with the human voice? Yeah. <laughs> What is... So that looked really crazy, right? But what's cool about it is he totally did that with his voice. Possible with the human <laughs> So he's going to go on, and really what he's doing has nothing to do with the word polyphonic at the moment. But it was really cool, so I showed it to you. It's a really neat TED Talk. You should totally check out, check out the Beardy Man TED Talk. However, later in his presentation, he talks about how the human voice can only make one sound. And he found that frustrating, because he can make some pretty cool sounds with his voice, right? So he wanted to make more sounds. So he actually created something that allows him to present multiple sounds at once, which is super awesome. So polyphonic. Let's look at the sentence. The first polyphonic synthesizers available in the 1970s created a complex sound. So they made a lot of different sounds at once, which was exciting at the time. Saxophone from the root sax, which is really just the name of the guy who created the saxophone, Aldolf Sax the inventor, and fawn meaning sound. So quite literally, this means like sax's sound because he made the instrument up. It's a noun and it's a wind instrument. My brother learned to control his breath while playing the, sound, the saxophone. And here is President Clinton playing the saxophone. once he played the saxophone on our Arsenio Hall. Okay, symphony from the sim meaning together and fawn meaning sound. It is a noun. Um, it literally means sounds together, uh, but really we use it to refer to an orchestra or music written for an orchestra um, or a harmony of sounds. So Beethoven was the first music composer to use voices in a symphony, right? Because generally when we think of a symphony, we just think of instruments playing. Um, we also have like Bass Hall, which is a place where the symphony plays. Do be aware, sometimes symphony is actually used as an adjective. If we talk about a symphony orchestra, that's telling us what kind of orchestra. So have that in your head. My darling dears, study hard, do your exercises. Um, good luck on your rates quiz. See you soon.